Hello and welcome to this video on how we can solder the mono 4th inch female guitar jack. These 4th inch jacks are responsible for delivering the guitar signal to the amplifier. We will focus on the mono jack because stereo jacks are less commonly used. Let's get into it. The mono jack has two connections. One will be used for the guitar's input signal and the other is for ground. It's critical to be able to determine which connection is the ground and which one is the signal. We can do this by looking at the conductivity test on our digital multimeters. You can go ahead and select the conductivity test. This is noted by the sound waves icon. When there's a connection between the two probe pins, we'll hear a high pitched squealing sound from the digital multimeter. If we start with the male 4th inch jack, it makes it easier to understand how the female jack is connected. Like the female mono jack, there's two connections here. The shield is the ground, and the tip is the guitar signal. The two regions are separated by the white ring in this cable's case. We can now determine which connections are the signal and the ground. Go ahead and connect the guitar cable to the jack. Then probe either the shield or the tip and try each connection. When there's a connection and the meter goes off, we know which is the path to the ground or the signal. The next step in soldering this mono jack is to cut your wires. You can use either solid or stranded. I'm going to use solid. This is 22 gauge AWG. To confirm how much wire to strip, you can always use the jack as a reference. Then strip an appropriate amount based off the amount of connection that's available. Before we start to solder, it's best practice to clean off the soldering iron tip. You can use a lightly damp sponge or paper towels. After I clean off the soldering tip, I go ahead and put a little solder on the wire. I'm using rosin core solder, meaning there's flux in the center. When you do this, you make sure there's a nice layer of flux on the wire before you even connect anything. This will make the soldering process easier. I'm replacing the wire so there's already solder and flux on this connection. No big deal if you don't have any on there already, but I'll just go ahead and reflow it as well. The objective of your soldering is to connect the wire to the connection, and the way that you do it is to establish the connection through the solder. Solder flows where the heat is, so ideally you want to heat the connector and the wire at the same temperature. This way you get a nice even distribution of solder. A indication of a good solder joint is that it is shiny and has a uniform layer of solder that's evenly sheeted across the connection. Here's a look at the ground signal. Notice how when I put the iron on the back side, the front side reflows. This is a good indication that there's an adequate heat transfer on this connector. Here's a look at the final product. It's nice, uniformly distributed, and is shiny. Here's an example of a bad solder joint. This is for the signal. This is not as good quality. It's not as shiny, and it's a little rough around the edges. This is not a big problem if it happens to you. You can go ahead and reapply the iron and reflow the solder. When you go back and touch it up, make sure that you heat the connection and the wire. This is critical to get a nice solder joint. The last soldering clip I'll include will be if you started with a clean connector without any solder started. I went ahead and tinned the wire and threaded it through the connector. I put the soldering tip on both the connector and the wire. To get the cleanest joints, you want to make sure that you flow the solder toward the iron tip. When you're finished soldering, go ahead and check your work by probing the wire and the connector, as well as various places on the guitar jack, just to make sure you have a solid connection and we didn't short anything, meaning there's connections between the signal and ground. This is not desired. 
you need two independent connections in order to get your signal from the guitar to the amplifier. The last conductivity test I'd recommend is to plug in the fourth jack and do one last conductivity test between the wire and the fourth inch male jack. This would rule out any other issues. One optional step is to use heat shrink. This will have a more professional look and protect your joint from the elements. Like the wire, I go ahead and gauge how much to cut based off the connector itself. I snip off the appropriate amount, then I apply the heat. Overall you end up with a professional looking guitar connection jack.